One of the best things about the PlayStation was the wealth of games available. Not just the big games like Metal Gear Solid or Crash Bandicoot, but smaller and more esoteric games like Vibribbon and Karushi, or Intelligent Cube if you're outside of the PAL territories. A popular game was the action or puzzle platformer, which often featured an animal protagonist running around, collecting things, and trying to save something or someone. Cygnosis Camden had spent a couple of years working on their own entry to the puzzle platformer genre, starring a cute young fox. The game was released in 1999 and was published by Sony directly, making it exclusive to PlayStation. Sadly, it was released with very little fanfare, and while the few publications who noticed it gave the game generally favourable reviews, it was largely ignored by a general public starting to tire of funny animal games. This was the fate of Kingsley's Adventure, a 3D puzzle platform game that failed to set the world alight despite being mostly a competent and plucky little game. You take the role of Kingsley, a fox cub destined for greatness. Before the story begins, his father was a knight who had fallen in battle. Orphaned, our young hero was adopted by the king and queen of the Fruit Kingdom. When the evil magician Bad Custard is expelled from the Fruit Kingdom for disguising himself as a chef and trying to poison the king, the villain steals the queen's book of magic. From this, he learns the dark arts and uses them to enslave the Fruit Kingdom's knights, attempting to take over the kingdom for himself. Kingsley is not best pleased about this, so he decides he's going to follow in his father's footstep and become a true knight. He sets off on a journey to prove himself, defeat Bad Custard, and save the Fruit Kingdom, or something like that. His journey will see him defend the good, defeat the bad, battle Bad Custard's henchmen, and take on his Dark Knights, the now enslaved defenders of the Fruit Kingdom. You start in Carrot Castle, where you're shown the ropes of combat, movement, and all the other tutorial associated things. It's a nice and safe environment where you can get used to the rather iffy camera controls and the somewhat awkward fighting and shooting mechanics, and they're not quite as tight as you'd like jumping physics before you're sent out into the main plot. You can also get a flavour for Kingsley's personality, whereupon you'll either love him, or wish to drown him in the sea and feed him to a pack of wild hunting dogs. He's never as bad as Bubbly the Bobcat, for instance, but he certainly elicits groans when he jokes with those he meets. Thankfully, he's not making quips all the time, mostly because everyone talks in the classic wibbles with text boxes way. And once you're out and about, you travel to different parts of the kingdom, meeting an eclectic cast of colourful characters along the way. Locations vary from almost open world areas with a somewhat of a Silent Hill amount of fog around them, like Sea Town and Porlock Village, to dark dungeons with tests of your platforming and fighting skills waiting within. Once you have beaten a dungeon and slain the boss, you're given one of your true knight items, and every item gained from Porlock Village onwards gives you an ability to reach the Dark Knight in the previous location. From Sea Town you get an axe and some armour, which is mostly cosmetic and only really important to the plot. From Porlock Village you get some gloves and a sword. In Rosary Village you get some boots and a crossbow. And in Alphasia you receive a magic gemstone for your shield, thus completing the true knight items. You can then pop back to see the king and queen and be knighted before going after the dark knights. Or, if you're itching for a fight, you can go and beat a dark knight as soon as you've received the true knight item needed to reach them. Once all the Dark Knights are defeated and return to their usual state, you face off against Bad Custard himself in the final showdown on Skull Island. So how does this game play? Well, to start with, Kingsley has the turning circle of a tank and the controls to match, which for the most part is fine as the levels are built around that. However, the creatures you have to fight are not, and it's very easy to be sideswiped or ganged up on, which soon eats away at your life gauge. With health and lives, being in limited supply, though extra lives can be picked up along the adventure or earned by collecting 50 coins. The game itself doesn't do anything really new or outstanding either, being happy to be a somewhat tricky, my first action game, rather than trying to push the boat out and bring anything new to the genre. That said, while the levels are generally geared towards Kingsley's controls, there are a few sections that ask for quite precise platforming, which can get maddeningly frustrating at times. There's a section in Snuff the Dragon's Lair at around quarter of the way through the game, which involves tricky platforming on slippery surfaces and is every bit as unfair as it sounds. It is certainly the hardest part in the game, even harder than a couple of timed platforming sections in the castle ruins where Reggie resides. 
The memories of sliding off those mossy green slopes will haunt me for the rest of my life, and the conveyor belt task at the end of his level has a special circle in hell reserved just for it. The puzzles themselves are rather gentle for a game of this genre, and I solved one of them through trial and error with relative ease, only to discover the solution as a picture on a wall shortly afterwards, having previously missed the room it was in. A couple of times in recording footage for the video, I did have to resort to checking YouTube long plays just to make sure I was doing things right with the timed platform puzzles. I was correct with my solutions, but I wasn't being fast enough at doing them. A section in the fourth dungeon requires you to fire a crossbow at a target and then jump onto a moving platform. However, you have to start running the moment you've fired using blind hope that you've hit the target, otherwise your platform departs without you. The game does a good job at using sound to aid you in knowing if you've been successful or not though. The bosses and Dark Knights can be quite cheap as well, with lots of tricky to dodge projectiles and teleportation mechanics. To the boss's credit, they are varied enough in their fights, with Oscar the Bald Eagle only being defeatable using a crossbow when he drops eggs containing spiders on you, while Snuff the Dragon fights you using a knife and fork as weapons. Defeating each of these foes is quite satisfying, especially after the more grueling dungeons. Each fight has a fitting musical accompaniment which sets the mood and tone of the fight quite nicely. The only downside to this is the last battle against Bad Custard turns out to be a little underwhelming due to his preference for teleporting to the other side of the arena and his cheap fireballs and magic spells. They're easy to dodge for the most part, and most of the difficulty stems from Kingsley's inability to move around the stage easily. That said, the climax of the rat falling into a giant pot of custard was a nice moment of levity at the end of the game. Spoilers by the way, though I won't spoil the post credit scene, it's short but sweet. One other pretty nice touch is that there is some evidence of the game's prototype builds that have been left in the game for the player to see, as well as a random secret. As you progress through the final dungeon, you come across some jail cells where you can find a few characters to talk to. Sylvester is believed to have been a boss who ended up being cut, though his boss theme is still on the game disc, plop it in a CD player to hear it, while Waldo might have been the character that became Sylvester before being transformed by bad custom's magic. There is also a fridge in one of the cells, which the developers claimed contained a talking stick of celery and a carrot during an interview on the official Kingsley's Adventure website. However, in normal gameplay, the fridge is too far away to interact with, and thus no one could tell if this was true or not. That was until the speedrunner Oxysoft developed some speedrun strats which could be used to gain access to the fridge, and finally reveal the carrot and celery stick inside. The final cell of interest contains a mysterious rabbit just named Prisoner. This rabbit appears to be the original Kingsley, before the character became a fox in the development process. It was nice to see the cut characters appear in game, and a good way to recycle assets instead of just deleting them. One of the character artists showcases a few character sketches on his website, including the original designs for Kingsley. It's an interesting gallery, and a must view for fans of the game. Playing this game again, I can see why my younger self didn't get very far before death. Despite the cute characters and colourful designs, this is not an easy game. While it's quite generous with the number of hits it takes to lose a life, it's very punishing in other ways, most notably for its platforming and lack of saving mid-level, opting to allow saving upon use of a foxhole instead, and an occasional checkpoint added to the trickier sections in case you die. However, from the difficulties and frustrations, there's a sense of satisfaction upon beating a part that was giving you issues. If you're looking to play this game yourself, the disc can fetch a pretty penny on eBay. However, if you have a hacked PlayStation Classic, the game is compatible with that, although some areas may turn up too dark to see anything properly, and other emulation options are available should you obtain a uh, review copy. Kingsley's Adventure is a competent, if aged, puzzle platformer, with gentle puzzling and less gentle platforming. If you'd like to spend three or four hours running around as an anthropomorphic fox on PlayStation, I'm not sure there's any games that fit the bill better. Well, it's not until the PS4 rolls around anyway. Thank you for watching. This has been a Tiger Tales gaming video celebrating PlayStation Month. If you'd like to keep on top with what we're doing for this month, you can hit one of the videos that are on the screen somewhere, or you can click on the nice subscribe button that we've got floating around as well. Yep. Or you can follow us at tigertalesgaming.co.uk. And if you want to help us feed the algorithm, feel free to leave us a like or a comment as well. Absolutely. But on that note, we need to say goodbye, everybody. So it's bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.